Bonjour à tous et toutes, comment allez-vous? Hello, how are you? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and fan channel above. If you have already subscribed to my channel, press the bell icon to get the latest updates. In today's class, we are continuing with this particular topic, direct and indirect speech in French. This is the part 3 video. It's a prerequisite to watch the part 1 and part 2 of this particular topic. So, today we are taking up another aspect of direct and indirect speech, which is imperative. Using direct and uh, indirect speech for the verb form imperative. Now, I am having a separate video on imperative as well, so it will be really helpful if you watch that particular video. These three videos are a must to be watched. All these links are given in the description box below. Now, quickly, uh, let's recap what does direct speech and indirect speech mean. Direct speech is when you quote something said by someone in an indirect or exact manner. Okay, someone said something and you are quoting that in the exact words. That is direct speech. And then what is indirect speech? Indirect speech is when you are quoting the words said by someone indirectly. That is, you are not speaking in the exact manner. That is, indirect speech. And then, what is imperative? Imperative is what? It's imperative, right? Um, okay, consider the tense. Uh, some consider it as a verb form. Both are fine. It is his imperative. It is particular... Uh, form is tense is used to give commands, orders, advice, etc. And it's done with only tu, vu, and nu. And when you're writing that in the statement at the end, exclamation mark is necessary. So, how to do direct and indirect speech with imperative. Now we all know how direct speech is indicated in French. Like a statement, a phrase in fact. Some person said to me or to him, him, her, whatever. Some person said that. Now like in English we have a comma and then double inverted commas, right? But in French, we don't use or have them for this particular purpose. Instead of comma, we put a colon. And instead of double inverted comma, we put these brackets. Uh, these brackets uh, resemble greater than less than symbols as in mathematics. And uh, these brackets are known as guillemets. We have already discussed that. So guillemets are used over here. Okay. And then... Now, that's one change which will take place when you are converting from direct to indirect. Okay, so the colon and these GMA will disappear. Okay, so after the first part of this statement, instead of colon, you will have the. Okay, and then the first verb which will be here in imperative form, that would be written in the infinitive form. And then rest of the sentence. Of course, if there is some uh, pronoun possessive or adjective possessive, you will change it accordingly. There could be some pronouns also, which will change accordingly. Now, I have taken an example as well. So, which we will discuss that aspect shortly. So, that's the change which will take place. So, instead of colon, you have the. And then you are writing in infinitive, like the verb given here which you are quoting, that verb will be written in the infinitive form and then the remaining part of the statement. Uh, let's erase it. Hmm. So, let's take first example. Uh, first example is, ma mère, uh, 
máme mladý mouž boku do fruí i legium. My mother said to me, eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Now legume is the word used for vegetables and monje is the verb here. Monje means to eat, right? And monje here is conjugated in the imperative form, right? With you, when we conjugate, we don't write the S, okay? So, this is direct speech. Oh, I missed the exclamation mark. It is necessary. Now, let's do it in indirect form. So, the first part will remain the same. Ma man madi. Golan, gone. In place of that, we have the. And then, monj is in imparative form, right? So, we will write it in infinitive. That is monje. Monje. Boku. The frui, a legume. And then, no need to put the exclamation mark. There is no need, you can simply put a full stop. Right. So the indirect form will be ma mer madi, the monje, boku, the flui, a legume. Fine. And no need to put the brackets as well. Guillaume also will not be there. Okay. Um, Mr. Dasta, yeah. Let's take another example. Le professeur dit aux étudiants étudier bien pour les examens. Fine. Uh, number two. La professeur, it's the short form which you may use for professor. Professeur dit aux étudiants uh, colon guillemet opened uh, Étudier bien pour les examens. Exclamation. Oh, wait. Yeah, now it's fine. Le professeur dit aux étudiants, étudier bien pour les examens. So here we are conjugating in party with the form vous since the professor is uh, saying to her students, like to the uh, object, right? Students. So, la professor dit aux étudiants. La professor dit aux étudiants. The professor said to the students, étudier. Étudier is the verb which means to study. Study well for the exams. Right. So, let's do it in indirect form. This is direct speech. So, it will be la prof di. Ah, the first part will remain same. Etudion. Colon and Guillaume vanished. So uh, we will write the. Now etudier. The infinitive form is etudier. Right. Now it's beginning with a vowel. So this change will take place. It will become the apostrophe. D'etudier. Bien. Pour. Les examens. That's how you will be doing the indirect speech. I want to add another aspect over here. Let's change it a bit. Pour. Huh? Uh, aux étudiants. So when the professor is addressing the students, he will be addressing with vous, like since it's a large number of students, right? Not single student. Single student, he could, uh, he or she could use tu, but here the person will be using boo, right? So what's the adjective possessive for boo? And example is plural. So taking that into consideration, it will be wo. So the professor said to the students, study well for your exams. Adjective possessive, your exams. La prof dit aux étudiants d'étudier bien pour then What's the change taking place here? 
the professor said to the students to study uh, well for their exams. Right? For their exams. So it will be the plural. Simple enough. Of course, you can't use wo in the indirect speech as well. Like, what would it mean? The professor said to the students to study well uh, for your exams. Um, no, right? The professor said to the students to study well for their exams. That would make more sense, right? Uh, I, I think the spelling is might be a bit unclear. It is N E U R S. Uh, okay. Let's have the third example. Fine. Example number three. Mon père nous a commandé. Écoutez-moi. Nous a commandé colon guillemé écoutez-moi ok so mon père nous a commandé écoutez-moi so my father commanded us to listen to me which means to listen. So, let's change it. Mon père nous a commandé Ah, the first part will again remain the same. No doubt. So, commandé, then the écouté. But one thing will happen different over here. L apostrophe and no more. So, more, me. When you are converting it into indirect form, it is becoming third person singular, right? And then the, this third person singular will be indicated by le, and le, and e, le. Le coming before écouté becomes what? L apostrophe, right? So that's how it is. Mon père nous a commandé de l'écouter. My father commanded us to listen to him. Right. That's how it will be translated. Now this phrase is becoming in third person. Hence, we have changed the pronoun. This was the aspect which I said a few months back that we will discuss shortly. So this aspect has been discussed. And now I will be taking the fourth and the last example for this particular video. Uh, again, my next example will be discussing a different aspect, which is negative form with imperative. Using negation with imperative, and we will be discussing in both forms, direct speech and indirect speech. Okay, let's uh, write the sentence. Il ma di. Il ma di colon guillemi opened uh, ne pa A slight definite explanation I think would be needed here. A I E. This is the imperative uh, conjugation of the verb avoir with you. We have uh, most probably, as much as I remember, five exceptions. And all those exceptions I have discussed in my empathy video, so must watch it. The link is in the description. Then, per means to be afraid. Avoir per. Avoir per is an expression which we use. Okay. Avoir expression to indicate to be afraid. So, he said to me, don't be scared. Now, how to do it in indirect speech? Il. Madi da na pas of war per. See? That's 
the simple ilma di da na taza bhai par he said to me to not to be scared or not to be afraid so that's how it is colon gone do added over here and ne pa is coming before avwa na pa and then avwa is coming in the infinitive form and then the rest part of the statement so in madi da na pa zwa pa he is said to me to not to be afraid that was the fourth example and now direct and indirect speech for empathy is done let's put a halt so to push you do it that's all for today if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my youtube channel and fetch the bell if you have any doubt or suggestion you may write it in the comment section below you may also like my facebook page by the same name learn fetch it on the bell see you in my next video thanks for watching all the bell and you play part along from say illamo